Good morning, I'm Mark Allen with Gaper.io, and I'm here today with Anand Satyadev, a director at Gilead Sciences right here in beautiful downtown Foster City. Good morning, Anand, how you doing? Good morning, I'm doing great, how about you? Good, it's always good to talk to someone very close to home, so um, we both both know the same areas pretty well. So, so yep. to, to, yeah, to start with, can you share a brief background of yourself and your work experience? Sure. Uh, so I've been working in pharma for quite some time, it's about 20 years. And my experience in pharma have been varied from working in the in industry as well as working as a consult consultant prior to joining industry. Um, I spent a whole lot of years with PwC and IBM Consulting. Hmm. Um, and uh, in, in, in my, my younger days where hmm. Travel was not a concern as such, um, mm -hmm. but as uh, I, I, I progressed in the, in the career and, and travel became a little more taxing on 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 me physically as well as mentally, uh, switched over to industry and started with Amgen in 2006 and mm -hmm. worked there for about seven years. Um, and uh, being in in pharma and biotech is, is one of the primary area of the, of the industry and, and Bay Area being half of that, I, I ended up being with, with Gilead in, in, in 2013 and has been here since then. Mm, so, so seven years with Gilead, that's uh, quite impressive. Um, so do, over those years, what has been your experience with remote employment? <clears throat> I'm assuming at first Gilead didn't allow it uh, when you first joined, is that correct? Sorry, can you repeat your question? Did, when you first joined Gilead, I'm assuming they did not allow you to work remotely, correct? No, yeah, of course. Um, uh, so Gilead typically has been fairly conservative on that. We we didn't have a formal flex hours till recently. Um, you you had the flexibility to work from home on on a on an as needed basis, but as an enterprise, we didn't have a program till um, I think it started 2018 or early 2019 when the formal flex program started with, with Gilead. And uh, that gave us some people some opportunity to, to work from home. Um, but when the pandemic started, again, we were kind of forced to, to, to go through that. Um, and uh, I guess one, one thing that everyone notices is, is that working remotely or working from home or working offsite is not really impacting the productivity or the volume of work or, or quality of work that we we are we are able to produce. There, there's virtually no impact on on the work being done by the employees and, and the contractors for that matter. Um, absolutely no impact. And if there was an impact, the impact was more on the positive side because now almost everyone is, is saving an hour or two on, on commute time. Mm -hmm. So that adds to the to the productive hours um, that, that we have for, for the company or the, that we have to give to the company. So from that perspective, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a new thing, but it's a, it's a, uh, it's a positive thing for, for the company as well as for the employees. Yeah, and I, I actually am familiar with your commute. Um, I actually can see the San Mateo Bridge from where I live. So yeah. I can see the cars getting off and going into Gilead. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, I mean, I would say, you know, without traffic, it's probably 25 to 30 minutes, but how, how long was the commute during rush hour pre-COVID? On the day, uh, or yeah, it, if on there's no traffic, it, it, it's 35 to 40 minutes um, on, on good days. Right. On an average, it's 55 minutes to an hour each way yeah. with my normal commute door to door. So that, that's, uh, that's what I said. I mean, on, on an average, I'm, I'm saving about two hours per day on, on commute time by working remotely. Yeah, and then as you know, if there was an accident on the San Mateo Bridge, it was longer. <laughs> oh yeah, but again, the, the point is like you you hear that that accident, but you just brave it out because you don't have any choice. <laughs> you have a no, big body of water between you and work, and the only thing that you have that connects is, is, is that bridge. So yes, yeah, accident, yes, it's there, but yeah, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go through it. <laughs> many times. Yeah. Yeah. So now that you're now that you are into, you know, working remotely, and, and uh, what what area of the company do you work in? Are you in IT or are you in? Uh, uh, yeah, I, I work in IT. 
Okay. So IT. yeah, and then to a certain extent that that helps as well because um, being in IT, I, I don't have to be in a lab. I don't have to work on on equipment. Um, so I have a, a, a somewhat better flexibility to to work remote. Um, there are certain roles within Gilead. They don't have that choice. They, they have to go to the lab and, and work on the, the assays and, and spectrometers and what other other equipment equipment that might they might be using. So they 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 are going to to work and, and Gilead is providing um, new operating procedures, uh, new facilities, health checks and, and and those kind of things. So th th those things are being done for for the roles or the for the people who have to be physically there on site to work. Yeah, and and how long did it take when when COVID first hit before they were able to set all that up for the? I'm assuming it's for the, the scientists and the clinicians. Yeah, it it was fairly quick. It it didn't it didn't take a whole lot of time. Um, and I'm going by memory here. Um, when the children first sent the children in place was put in place, very quickly after that, and it might even be less than a week or a couple of weeks at max when we have all the procedures of um, on-site health questionnaires, um, temperature checks, limited access, those kind of things were implemented fairly quickly. Um, but then we continued working further on that and some of the physical separation of workstations and lab equipment to maintain social distancing. Um, those things were were implemented as well fairly fairly quickly. Mm. Let's see. Yeah. So so now that it's been going on for almost nine months. Um, what do you think Gilead will do once the stay in place order is lifted? Do you think they'll go to a hybrid, or or do you think they'll allow people to re work remotely if they so choose? I I, I think at this point it, it it's uh, mandatory. It's required that we work remotely mm -hmm. um, once the shelter in place restrictions are, are removed, Gilead campus will open up and uh, we are retrofitting most of our buildings, setting it up with, uh, with, with workspaces that are compliant with, um, with, with the guidelines and, and new standards that, that we have in, in that area. But my expectation is that, that Gilead will open and, and will go back to normal um, working Nine to five. Uh, working in, in yeah working working environment uh, what will change or what i'm expecting it to change is that there will be a, a broader acceptance and uh, uh, agreement that working remote is is not such a um, such a big issue as it was earlier so there will be more acceptance more um, um, appreciation of working remotely and i'm i'm expecting that even if after the restrictions are are removed, a portion or a percentage of employees will choose to work from from work from home. Mm. And how about yourself? Do you, do you, what's your preference, at home or in the office? It will definitely not be five days a week at, at in, in the office. It, yeah. No, it will not be. I, I, whether whether it be three, two, four, one, or or however that 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 works out, you, you can work on that. But it will definitely not be the the usual Monday through Friday. Eight to five or eight to yeah. five thirty. That that will not be there. Yes, and and I know what Gilead does. Living, you know, like two miles from it. Um, why don't you explain to people what you do? And I know you, you know, COVID had a very direct impact on your business because you're working on on something yeah. very close to it, right? Yeah. So from from that perspective, uh, Gilead has been in in business for a little over thirty years now, um, and uh, our primary product based is in virology area. So a bunch of products related to uh, treating various viruses and, and HIV being being one of the, the core strengths of Gilead. That's how it, it, it started several years ago. Um, recently, uh, about seven or eight years ago, hepatitis C drug was, was another uh, major drug that, that came that or that Gilead produced and it, it, it went in market. Um, and, uh, and of course the coronavirus work that, that we, we are currently doing. And again, I mean, incidentally, that, that's not a new product that we had. It, it was being worked at for, for quite some time. Earlier it was um, looked, or, looked at or worked at it from Ebola treatment perspective. Hmm. 
Um, but and that, that's why we were able to respond to produce a, a remedy as, as quickly as, as, as we have um, because the molecule was was just there. We just had to do some specific testing with with, with Corona and 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 make it uh, available to, to to the patients. Um, so that's a, a that's the primary um, area where Gilead works in, in, in viral Algeria. And then one, one thing um, with, with Gilead is that most of the Gilead products are, are cures outside of HIV, which we, where we don't, we don't have a cure, but um, for, for other disease areas, these are cures. I mean, hepatitis C mm -hmm. product that, that we had, it, it's a cure. You, you take 12 weeks course of that product and, and, and you're, you're done, you're fixed. You, you don't need to worry about that product. Similarly for um, coronavirus, um, it, it's not, a, a, it's not a, a management product. You, you take that product and, and, and you're cured. And so- and, Oh, good. I was gonna say, is that um, product FDA approved already? Yes. Oh, it is. So it's uh, approved for emergency use uh, mm. at this point. It's not full approval yet. Um, if I remember correctly, it's been, Approved for general usage in some countries, um, but FDA is, is uh, um, still going through that analysis. But we, yes, we do have approval for emergency, emergency usage. Okay, so people that are like in the hospital that are, yeah, in, in you know late stages or you know fairly fatal, they can actually get your. And what's the name yeah. of the drug? I forget the name of it. Um, Remdesivir yes, is the name of the, the compound that we have. Yeah, I know. I've heard of it. I've heard it on the news and I knew yeah. it was your product. And it's like, oh, wow, that's right down the street for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just walk down and get some. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that's an option. If, you, if, if, if it comes to that, I hope it never comes to that. But, but yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. So now that we've gone remote, um, and it's, I don't know if you know, Gaper really helps companies scale, build and scale products, you know, and you're in IT. What do you, you think... Um, Gilead will be more open to saying, hey, we can outsource some of our stuff, or do you think there's going to keep it here in the Bay Area? Um, that this situation definitely gives us more options or more flexibility. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there's this active thinking going on around that. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, again, I mean, if you if you look at it, Bay Area is is an expensive piece of real estate. Um, it is maintaining offices and and and, and employees here is expensive. Um, so financially, um, it will make more sense. But but again, I, I don't think at this point there's mm -hmm. active talks happening towards that. But um, who knows what what how things turn out in in, in, in that you area. never know again, if it happens. Um, I, I won't be surprised. I, it'll be totally understandable that as an enterprise, yeah, no, uh, Gilead is, is thinking like that, and I'm sure it's, it's not just Gilead. There, there are other companies who are situated or located in in high cost areas. Mm -hmm. Almost all of them are assessing their um, their strategy and that where they want to be located, or where they want to be um, keep keep their base or or maintain right. their base. Well, one of the ones between you and me is Facebook, as you know, and they just built that new campus. So it'll be interesting to see what they do when things. Yeah, happen. yeah, yeah. And I mean, yeah, you, you've yeah. been along that corridor, I presume, and that yeah. has just exploded in the last two or three years. Yeah. So, well, Anand, I want to thank you for your time today. It's always good to talk to uh, a local person. And hey, maybe when this is over, we can get together and have a coffee or a beer. Sure. All we'll right. do that. All right. Have a great day. Thanks. You too.